Johannesburg was predominantly built on lines of separation. By lines of separation, I mean, of course the city was built on gold, but somebody had to get the gold out of the ground. The gold fields of the Witwatersrand in general are considered to be both the richest and poorest in, in the entire world. It's rich because it contributed to over half of the world's gold production, but poor because it's a low-grade ore. In order to make the mines profitable, um, it required vast amounts of cheap labour. It resulted in urban planning that wasn't spatially just, where people were literally separated by vast spaces of industrial, mining activity, etc. Johannesburg has changed from that landscape. The city has to be restitched, as it were. It's still going to be a lot denser. Um, you can imagine a hundred and, you know, over a century of of cultural artefacts um, left behind in the landscape um, with sand and skyline right at the top. It's the pace with which things happen here that I think makes this place such an incredibly dynamic landscape. There seems to be an interesting play between the foundation or, or, or rather the, the bones or the structure of a particular landscape and what that landscape is today. There's a different vibrancy. And so usually I would start with broad lines. So I, would, I would find the architecture of the drawing um, and these detail right on the end. Obviously vast amounts of investment um, made the mining activities profitable and, and possible but it required a, a, an army of an unskilled labour force in order to make the mines profitable. That is the foundation of our city. It has always been a frontier, a frontier space, a frontier city. A city that, have, that has attracted both the best and the worst in humanity for over 130 odd years. It, it is a city that has come as, as its heart, as its pulse. That is the driving force of, of the heart of this place that that is known throughout the world as Johannesburg, the, the city of gold. My razor is as much a drawing tool as charcoal or ink. I don't use an eraser in order to make corrections with, I use an eraser um, in order to draw with, cut, cut into the charcoal, cut into the mark. I was kind of toiling with, toiling with the idea of having it, you know, drawing from a big still life that is already set up, but I thought that that might be a little bit too contrived. The whole idea with this is to pile up artifacts, cultural artifacts. Um, I suppose the word that I'm looking for is my, my compost heap. The idea of a cultural, a cultural compost heap. If one thinks about the, some of the most influential figures, humanists of the 20th century, I'm talking about people like Nelson Mandela, I'm talking about people like Bram Fischer, Nelson Mandela came from the Eastern Cape. Bram Fischer came from the Orange Free States. Uh, but it required their passing through Johannesburg in order to shape their world vision. In that sense, the city has, has, has given birth or given rise to some of the most influential humanists of the 20th century. That is Johannesburg's true legacy. And that, I believe, is something that we should focus on and and build upon